Welcome to Little Home Projects. In this video, I finish up my IKEA dresser turned bathroom vanity. In a previous video, I converted this IKEA dresser into a vanity for my bathroom. One thing that I hadn't finished yet, though, was deciding how I was going to solve the space behind it. The dresser is smaller than a regular vanity, and it needed to sit about six inches from the wall for all the plumbing to fit. My solution is to make a raised wooden shelf that I can use as a anchor point for other fixtures, so I'll have other wooden shelves that match, that way the style will be cohesive. I went to my local hardware store and picked out a few boards to build this shelf. I chose pine because it's cheap and easy to find. I picked three boards, which is actually about twice as much wood that I'll need for this project. I did this for future projects so that down the road when I'm working on the bathroom, there's a better likelihood of each of those projects matching and looking better with each other. The first cuts I made on my wood were just getting it down to a more workable size. I want to get the rough pattern built and glued together before I cut it down to its finished dimensions. This way I can really fine tune the, the fit and feel so that it's more custom made for this vanity. I pulled up the table saw and cut off one of the edges of each of these pieces of wood. This way I have a nice square straight line that I'll be able to build off of. The shelf has a top and a front, and I wanted both of them to have a nice square edge. That way I can make sure one goes into the other nice and flat, as well as sitting on the base of the vanity. The square everything is, the less rounded it is, the, the tighter it'll all fit. I'm going to be attaching this shelf to the wall using French cleats. The top half of that French cleat that's going to be attached to the shelf is going to be attached via pocket screws. So I'm putting pocket screws about every six inches. This should help keep it nice and tight and keep things from warping over time. With those all done, I can run it through the table saw on a 45 degree angle, and this is what my shelf will sit on when it's assembled. The two main pieces of the shelf are going to sit one inside the other, so I'm using a router bit to cut out a rabbit that one piece of the shelf will sit into. I'm hoping this gives the illusion of one solid piece of wood, or at the very least, you won't see any fasteners or any hardware on the front or the top. My router is not strong enough to cut a three quarter inch rabbit like this in one pass, so I did it in a couple passes, uh, one to get the right depth and then another one to get the right width at a full three quarter inch. With all the pieces cut, I can start to assemble. The first things to go together will be the French cleat piece to the underside of the top portion of the shelf. I'm using two clamps here attached to a third piece of wood just to keep things from moving around but if you have the right kind of clamps for using pocket holes, this is actually a lot more simple. But I don't, so this worked just fine. The top part of the shelf didn't want to fit into the rabbit that I had cut, so I had to use a razor knife to just widen that up just the tiniest bit. It was still a pretty snug fit, but just getting it in there tight with some glue means it's not going to move anywhere and it's going to be nice and solid. Using clamps to hold this all in place, I now took the cleat off of the whole shelf, added some glue to in between the cleat and the shelf, and then screwed it back together. Now I can let this sit overnight and make sure it'll be nice and solid to keep working with it tomorrow. I used a piece of paper towel to clean out any of the glue squeeze out those at the top, but because I used a pretty thin layer, this was pretty minimal, and I plan on uh, sanding this down the road anyway, so I will be cleaning it off either way. After a day or two, I've taken the clamps off and everything looks like it's holding nice and solid. I've brought the shelf inside so I can actually measure it in place so that I know that I can cut it to the exact right size. I've made the shelf a couple inches larger than it needs to be. This way I can cut from both sides keeping all the wood flush and clean when I cut it. I took it over to the miter saw to cut it down to its final size. Because of the lip that I'm leaving on the front of the shelf, it doesn't sit flat inside the saw. So I had to use a pencil here and a piece of paper just to get it to sit nice and square. And that way, I felt comfortable cutting it. Cutting it this way, you can see how the two pieces fit right into the edge. And it really does feel like one solid piece of wood. I know up close it's not, it doesn't look completely solid, but from a distance, it looks nice and, and continuous. Inside the bathroom, I measured where my studs were behind the vanity. I also know where all the drain pipes and plumbing are, so I make sure not to hit any of this with screws. I transferred the marks of the studs onto the bottom piece of the French cleat. Heading inside to attach the shelf, 
I pre-drilled and pre-screwed all this piece of wood because the space behind the vanity is a bit tight, so I needed to do things on these crazy angles to make sure it was going to work right. I really like this style of hooking it to the wall because things don't have to line up perfect left to right. They just have to be level and the right height, but everything else just slides into place. Filling in this space is just a matter of cutting a piece of pine to match the space exactly. The more accurate I can make it, the more continuous and solid and correct it'll feel. I use some off cuts of my trim to give it the right width and sort of make a pencil outline of pieces that need to come away and then cut it all out with the jigsaw. I found a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood and drilled a few pocket hole screws in different sides. I'm going to use this to attach on the inside of the shelf and give my filler side piece something to screw to. Seeing it all in place, I'm pretty happy with the progress. I think this is going to turn out to be quite the nice little solution for this space. It's going to give me functional shelf space as well as covering a hole. Before staining it, I took the time to sand everything. I used, I think, up to 220 grit, uh, maybe even higher, but basically just got it all nice and smooth, uh, no splinters, rounded over the edges just a little bit, and then dusted it all off and prepped it for staining. When it comes to staining, pine's known to be a bit touchy. It can kind of accept stain at different amounts in different spots. So using a wood conditioner helps level that out, and this way you get more of a consistent result each time. So I applied a good thick coat of conditioner to every surface and let it dry. Then I gave it a quick wipe down and really nothing came off, it just all soaked into the wood. Once I was sure that was dry, I switched to the stain. I'm using a dark brown stain called Jocko Bean. Um, I just like the color that it kind of gives. I've, few, I've tried a few different test samples of pine before and we were somewhere in between the gray and the dark brown. We even tried mixing it different times, but we found that just sticking with the one color made it nice and consistent each time. So this is the color we're gonna go with for everything inside the bathroom when it comes down to additional projects down the road. It's gonna be this white, dark brown, and black accents. It's always fun seeing the stain come off of wood. You really get to see the color and the, and the, and the texture and all the different values sort of really pop out of there and it just makes pine turn from this really strange or just makes pine turn from this plain light colored wood to a really interesting dark thing and I, I know that there's probably a lot of people that are really knowledgeable in different woods and different qualities but as a, as a beginner, as, as a novice, I think this pine looks great after it's been stained. I've let that dry overnight, and it's time to put a coating on to protect the wood. I want to make sure that this is going to be nice and protected from humidity because it is going to be in a bathroom. I coated all sides of this wood, even the underside. I want to make sure that it's sealed from moisture, so you got to get every little corner. After that had dried overnight, I gave it a light rub down with a 400 grit sandpaper. This just takes off any of the raised parts of the brush or any bubbles that were inside the coating and it just sort of smooths it out and it makes it ready for the next coating of clear coat. In the end I give it three coats and I find that just makes it nice and thick, nice and strong and it really is, pol it, it's polished up so nicely now, it just is really smooth. One other very important step that I didn't do in my installation of the vanity that I'm going to do now before I finish up this shelf is attaching the vanity to the back of the wall. This is very important because if a child were to pull out a drawer and climb up the vanity, they could pull it over onto themselves and it's and children die. It's unfortunate and it's something you needs to be you need to deal with this when it's when you're installing it correctly. When I purchased it from IKEA, it did come with clamps to screw it to the wall and I haven't used those because I built it separately in a way it wasn't intended to be used. So, I've got to make myself some clamps to do the same job. I've gone to the hardware store and I picked up a piece of steel that's used for fastening different pieces of wood together. I'm going to be cutting it up and bending it to do the same job that uh, those original clamps were supposed to do. I cut it with my jigsaw, filed it down so there was nothing sharp because it was sharp when I was done cutting it with the jigsaw, and then used it in the vice grips here to bend it to the shape that I needed it to be. With those bent and a couple holes drilled, I'm able to attach it to the wall 
and the flat part of the steel goes underneath the underside of the countertop. From underneath the vanity, you can see how this is sitting, and you can actually see the original clamp that it came with. It's just too short to be able to do this job, so I needed to use a new piece of steel for this. I did make sure to check that these screws would not come out the top of my counter, and that's very important. You don't want screws to come up in the middle. That'll just ruin the surface, and you'll have that for the rest of the life of this cabinet. There'll be no fixing that, so make sure any screws you screw up on from the underside will not go through the top. With those done on both sides, I feel a lot better knowing that this is safe now and it's not going to get pulled over very easily. It really does also help strengthen the entire unit. It won't move now, it doesn't want to twist, it really stays locked in that position. Whereas before it was just free floating and attached to the plumbing, which can also be dangerous. The very last thing I did for installing this shelf was to put a thin bead of silicone across the top of the mounting bracket. This really isn't necessary, except I didn't want this thing lifting off very easily. And also, this bead of caulking sort of absorbs any gaps that are in the wood and just sort of makes it sit a bit more solid. If I ever want to take this shelf out, I will have to kind of rip it away from this, but I think it'll come away easily enough that I'll still be able to access the plumbing easily. And the cover plate that I have on the side allows me access from the side if I quickly need to see what's going on behind there. The shelf sits nice into there. I'm not putting a lot of weight on it, not wiggling it around, just getting it gently into space, and that way it can sit and dry. To attach the side cover board, I found these three black screws that I had and just didn't laying around, and they'll, they'll be the only hardware that's visible. But keeping them visible means that if I ever need to get behind here, or if someone else needs to get behind here, it's probably the first thing they'll try and do is just take out these screws. This attached nicely into the side piece, onto that piece of plywood that I added in there, and as much as it looks like it should be structural, it's really not. It's just a cover piece. So it's just these three screws. The bottom is just free floating, swinging. And if you didn't, if you don't kick it, it'll be fine. Uh, because it's back behind the counter, I'm really not worried about it. It's just to cover the hole. And with that, this project is finally done. I actually used this vanity for almost an entire year without finishing the space behind there, without getting all this work done. And it's really quite the nice little upgrade in the bathroom to not be able to see behind there and not have things fall behind there and have to go get them again. I'm pretty happy with the way this turned out and I'm really happy that just using common materials like pine with stain is going to give me the look that I'm looking for. This is really a nice simple project. Uh, it doesn't have to be cut the way it's cut if you don't want to do a rabbit, if you don't want to do any kind of fancy cuts. Really just a board on a board screwed together, sanded, stained, and sealed and get the job done. I hope you like this video. This one's been a while coming, so I, there's been a few comments on the uh, bathroom vanity, and, and they've all been very positive, so I want to thank everyone for being so interested in this one. And I hope that this is a, a good solution for you if you wanted to try something like this out. I'd be very curious to see if anyone else does anything like this. Thanks for watching Little Home Projects. If you like this video, please hit subscribe. I try to post a new video every week or two. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon.